I am Wayne Hansen, the pastor of Summit Church at Castle Rock, um, your friend and host of the Wayne Feeds Daily Podcast and also Wayne Feeds Weekly. Um, we do ministry podcasts, we do daily news and information, uh, social commentary, that kind of thing. If you'd like to email me, you can, PastorWayneH at Mac.com or at, uh, Twitter at PastorWayneH and you can direct message me there. Today's podcast is brought to you by Papa's Texas Barbecue. My good friend Monty Williams will take great care of you if you're here in the central Colorado area, anywhere up and down the Front Range. They love to cater barbecue meals, uh, special uh, events, graduations, anniversaries, you name it, you can be a part of it. We're also brought to you by the Voltage Youth Ministry, which is the youth group of our church. Uh, They're planning a trip to Colorado Springs this weekend, going to Dutch Brothers and having many uh, multiple adventures. And uh, one other sponsor we're going to talk about today is is the Worship Central course. This is a seven-week course uh, designed to help worship leaders and worship musicians to play better as a team, to to lead worship better, to write their own music, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you won't be able to see this uh, live Facebook, but this will be on the recording later. So if you want to subscribe on our YouTube channel, look for Wayne Feeds Daily on YouTube or uh, go to iTunes and look up Wayne Feeds Daily. Subscribe to the podcast and either one of those places. But Worship Central course. Watch this quick 50 second commercial about what what Worship Central is all about. The Worship Central course is the big idea. It's the thing we've been working on since launching in 2006. Taking every conversation with great leaders, thinkers, theologians, songwriters, worship leaders, we've distilled it all into a seven unit course that explores the big theological and practical issues around leading worship in the 21st century. If you are passionate about developing the worship life of your local church, this course is for you. It covers everything that we want to lay down as foundations for our worship teams, about culture, about how we can leave behind teams that in a hundred years' time have transformed our communities. The first session, Why is Worship Central?, looks at the big picture of what worship is. Secondly, Encounter God. Who is God? How does that impact our view and understanding of Him? And looking at values that are essential to worship. Thirdly, Leading Worship big questions we can be asking ourselves as we prepare to lead as worship leaders and musicians. Fourthly, releasing creativity, how we can write amazing music that will impact the church and bring glory to God. Fifthly, how to play together, how as musicians we can work brilliantly well to create amazing arrangements of songs and sounds. Sixth, the effective team, how we can work together to add more than the sum of our parts to bring something amazing to Jesus. And seventh, finally, the authentic leader, how all of this doesn't count for anything unless our lives and the way we live in the decades ahead is going to point people to Jesus. So I'd encourage you, check out worshipcentral.org. You can check out all the sessions of the course. And the best thing about it is the whole thing is free. Hong Kong's such a transient city and there's people always coming and going. We feel there's a real need here to be raising up worship leaders, especially in our own church. And so the Worship Central course is just a great way to get everyone on the same page. It's a great starting point um, for us to be able to train up and raise up new worship leaders. Amazing the way that it has an ability to cross denominations and bring worshippers together in unity. Our hope for this course is that it will be an amazing resource to envision, encourage and inspire your local teams. So the next step, get to the website. There's lots of training material to encourage you in how to lead the course. Plan your course, gather your teams, put the dates in the diary. We really believe that together we could change the world. So if you're a worship leader, you're on a worship team, you serve anywhere on a church ministry team, go to worshipcentral.org. You can learn more about the course. It's completely free. All the session uh, materials are free. Videos are free for download. And there's uh, PowerPoint slides. PDFs, uh, Microsoft Word docs that you can use to train your team and just uh, look into Worship Central. Real quick, let's look at uh, some quick headlines today from the news. 
All right, some of you guys have seen uh, the shooting in Annapolis, Maryland, in a newsroom. I want to just quick go to the CNN feed and talk about uh, ways that we need to be praying for the shooting that's happening here across the country just a short bit ago. Telling CNN uh, that there have been multiple injuries and fatalities, uh, a shooting uh, in Annapolis, Maryland, that's the capital of Maryland, about an hour outside of Washington, D.C. The shooting was at the newspaper there, uh, the Capitol uh, Gazette. Uh, Police, law enforcement are saying that one individual is in custody, but uh, they are still saying it is an active shooter situation. They are making sure that there is no other shooter before they uh, give the all clear. I want to bring back CNN's Josh Campbell, the former FBI uh, supervisory uh, special agent. And Josh, we got some very vivid descriptions there uh, from uh, the Capitol Gazette uh, crime reporter Phil Davis talking about what it was like being in the newsroom hiding under his desk after uh, his colleagues had been shot hearing the shooter reload. That's right, Jake. I mean, we hear from uh, witnesses in these types of incidents. We've heard from them before. It never is easy to hear the, the panic, the chaos that ensues. And one thing that's important to remember is although, you know, workplaces will prepare for these types of incidents, we've seen the uptick in the number of active shooter training programs that are put up, being put on. Nothing prepares you for that actual moment where, you know, something happens and now it's you have that fight or flight reaction. We always talk about the run, fight, hide, or, fight or hide uh, methodology that's now being used and having to go through that. We're going to hear a lot of those stories. And again, there's still a lot that we don't know as far as what took place in the newsroom. The fact that this is a news business uh, means that you have people that are, you know, collecting information and pushing that out so that we'll hear about it and we'll continue to hear those details. One thing that's also interesting as we look at, you know, the response that's taking place right now, both from witnesses and obviously the police, is, you know, there's a lot that goes into this type of training that we don't see. And these law enforcement agencies will work together. They'll train together. We heard uh, you mentioned earlier that one of the medical facilities is, had indicated that they were receiving at least one patient. Uh, when these types of incidents go out, medical facilities are now part of this response plan. They'll get that initial word that, you know, we have a crisis situation, be prepared to take casualties, to take patients. And, you know, it appears as though we have one person that was then transported. We'll probably see more of that as, as you know, the injuries are, or, uh, uh, we hear more about them and they're resolved. And then one thing obviously is when the police actually get to the point where they're ready to brief the press and brief the public, we'll learn those additional details. But right now I think their focus is on clearing that building and then we'll get additional details about what took place inside. Let's, uh, let's pray for that uh, active situation right now in Maryland. Father in heaven, we just, in the spirit, we just reach our hands towards Maryland right now. We ask that you would be with the first responders, the police, the fire department, any people that might still be trapped in the building. Father, I would, we just pray that you would reduce casualties and you'd bring about the best outcome. And it sounds like there's some fatalities already, but Lord, I pray you'd minimize those. And uh, may we hear of, of miracle stories and testimonies Testimonies coming out of this uh, crime scene and that you would preserve life in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen everybody. All right, let's get to the, the, the segment that a lot of you are online for. So inspiration and motivation and then we'll uh, we'll have our, our time for uh, <laughs> All right, from the Word of God today, June 28th, uh, Psalm 146 is our passage in the One Year Bible. It says, But joyful are those who have God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. What a good promise, especially in a day like this and uh, what we've been going through just online, seeing people suffering. So if you want to uh, get interviewed here, let's talk. Scroll all through here and we're going to have a chance. Pastor Steve, are you still there? Are you willing to talk? Did he? Oh, he must have had to log off. Raquel Garcia, I'm going to bring you on camera. If that's okay with you, let's see if this works. I want to hear about Hard Beauty today, if we can get her on the line. Hello, my, my form says adding. Hopefully we have a, a robust enough Wi-Fi connection. Hold on, i got to figure this thing out. Hey, there you are. Good to see you. I'm going to move this way. So okay, there we go. 
How are you? Hi, how are you, Pastor Wayne? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to our first ever Wayne Feed Super Chat, where we're actually videotaping uh, interviews with people straight over Facebook Live, and then this will be archived to the Wayne Feed uh, Daily Podcast on YouTube and iTunes. So, cool. Um, I know that you've been doing a lot of work with uh, recovery, the recovery movement, and of course, you did a lot of work with that memorial we did with the Putmans a few weeks ago. But uh, you yeah. and I had some long talks in the hospital about um, hard beauty. Can you can you show us some ink, sister? Can you show, give oh us, yeah, give us I got. The... I, yeah, there's my there's the beauty or no, that's hard. Yep. And then beauty right here. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're holding a phone, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm holding my phone. So I'm trying to do both. But... <laughs> oh, it's all good. Tell us about your ministry and your nonprofit and what what you're hoping God will use you to do uh, through that. Well, I run a nonprofit called Helping Everyone Recover, and that nonprofit started out of the Black Forest fires. And since then, I mean, we've thousands of people from homelessness to uh, foster care and that sort of thing we've helped out. Um, most recently, my daughter, actually, she's 14. Her name's Mackenzie, and she runs um, Operation PJ, and Operation PJ collects new pajamas during the holiday season. Nice. About And then I actually am a life and recovery coach, and I have walked with people for over eight and a half years. Um, been eight, sober and clean eight and a half years myself. And so um, I meet with people all the time, whether it's on Facebook or in person, and help them recover. That's awesome. And what's your web address for people here in Central Colorado? Um, my web address is www.helpingeveryonerecover.org, um, but right now my hard beauty um, spot is actually only on Facebook. I'm developing my website now. Uh, well, so many people are on social media anyway, so it makes it makes total sense. I think with the yeah. ministry and church, over half the stuff that I'm doing is on social media and not on necessarily a web page anyway. So that's great. It's so true. It's so true. It's almost like you just need a landing site and mm -hmm. then direct them back to Facebook or social media. So. Right, right. So if, uh, if there's any, because I've had a lot of watchers and a lot of viewers and subscribers. Uh, in, at one point, we were in the thousands and thousands. I, I think today I may, we may have a few hundred, but anybody that's watching or listening online today and they're in the middle of an addiction or they're in the middle of, you know, regret or remorse or self-loathing, what would you what would, what would you say to a person like that who's just, they feel stuck? Um, you know, when I felt stuck, um, gosh, you know, when I first got sober, it was a matter of, you know, that scarcity moment of losing what I had, which was nothing really, and then not getting what I want and being in fear. Um, and the first thing I would tell you is surrender. Um, surrender was a huge surrender and obedience probably were the first two things I had to do. Yeah. Um, surrender my will over to the care of God as I understand him. Um, and then, um, be willing to listen to somebody outside of myself. You know, I, I'm not one of those people that got it the first round, um, but I did put myself in treatment and haven't messed up since. Um, you know, I found God first and was able to find sobriety through that. Um, the guilt and remorse part, that was a lot harder for me. Right. And that's where I found my love of Jesus Christ. I, um, confessing everything that had happened to another person um, whom I trusted, right. um, and then realizing that Jesus had already died for my sins long before I ever committed them yeah. um, was completely freeing for me. Awesome. Um, and so it's a process. And yeah. I would just say, um, find somebody who's been through what you've been through, um, because that's when our testimony is valid. Um, that's why we've struggled. That's why I'm at where I'm at. Only, you know, the cool thing is that I'm clean and sober, but really God did that for me to help you. Um, I'm sober to help other people be sober, and that's um, to find sobriety. And so I would just say surrender. Give up. That's Give up. That's so great. Any other things you want to say before I move on to another super chatter? No, no. I'm so grateful that you let me. Oh, hi, Jordan. My son popped on here. Oh, hi, cool. kid. Nice. Um, and he's in Iowa right now at a church retreat. So, oh, cool. um, no, I would just say I, I, it was a spontaneous thing, obviously, and God had a plan for me to be on here today. Yeah, totally. And so, no, thanks for having me, Wayne. Have a great day, Pastor. You, you bet. Love you. We'll see you, we'll see you sometime Love soon you at church again, you. I'm sure. You All got right. it. All right. I'm, Bye. Uh, take care. Pastor Steve Munns, if you're still around, I'd like to bring you on. All right, 
so I love Jack Johnson. I don't know if there's any Jack Johnson fans out there. Give me a thumbs up. But one of my favorite Jack Johnson tunes is one called Taylor, and uh, this will be my best stab at it. There we go. They say Taylor was a good girl, never went to be late, complain, express how it is in her brain. On the night shift, packing out the tickets, gonna have to pay her if you wanna park here. Mom's little dance, a quiet little secret, working on the streets, not never gonna keep it. Poor Taylor, she just wanders around, unaffected by the winter winds. She's somewhere else, so far and clear, about 2,000 miles from here. Peter Patrick, Peter Pat is on the window, sunny silhouette won't let him in. Got nothing cause he's been falling Somehow Sonny knows just where he's been Think the singing on Sunday gonna save his soul Now that Saturday's gone Sometimes he thinks that he's on his way I can see Lights are on. He just wanders around, unaffected by the winter winds. And he'll pretend that he's somewhere else, so far and clear, about 2,000 miles from here. a lot of fill up with not give them what you gotta give to get a dollar bill used to be a limber chick and time has been a tick and now she's bigger living to the man with money in his pocket flying in his pocket only flying by on his way to a better world Taylor finds a better world Sort of nailed it, whatever. Anyway, hope you guys are doing good. Anybody else here on the line that would like to be interviewed? I'm going to try you one more time, Pastor Steve. See if you're still there. I saw a wave. I don't know if that was a wave goodbye. It might have been. And if it was, that's okay. I might try someone else here if they're interested. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like to be interviewed. Otherwise, I might just close down the podcast and call it a night. Have dinner tonight with... Gracie and her new boyfriend. We're making peanut butter chicken and we're going to have a good evening. I hope you're having a good time wherever you are. I don't know if you heard, if you live here in Castle Rock, they canceled the fireworks. We have a high of 105 degrees in Denver today and the, the fire danger is at an extreme high. So, well, let's let's move on to our final segment and we will call it a day. Uh, once again, today's uh, podcast is brought to you by the Voltage Student Ministry of Summit Church at Summit Church of Castle Rock. Summit Church of Castle Rock meets at Castleview High School Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. in the auditorium at Castleview High School. We're also brought to you by Papaw's Texas Barbecue. And let me just tell you a little bit about Papaw's. Papaw's Texas Barbecue offers handcrafted, authentic, southern, slow-cooked mesquite barbecue and delicious sides delivered or catered to the entire Denver Fort Range Front Range area from Boulder to Colorado Springs. Give us a call or jump on the webpage for an unforgettable southern hospitality experience. Papaw's Texas Barbecue.com or call 720-380-1276. Ask for Monty or Leslie Williams. They will treat you right. I've had their 12-hour brisket. It is amazing. Amazing. And um, this weekend we are starting a new um, 
uh, series at church called Jesus in the Old Testament, and it's going to be a powerful time. We played the promo on, on the podcast in the past, so we're going to leave that till tomorrow. And um, I want to encourage you to connect with us online if you need anything. Call the church office at 303-524-4000. Um, follow me on Twitter uh, at Pastor Wayne H. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or subscribe on iTunes. Uh, support the Wayne Feeds Daily Podcast. I believe it's a it could be a life changing, a, a culture shifter, ch- culture shaping force for good. Um, as we talk about uh, Christian world news from a biblical perspective, and we just talk about living the Christian life. So uh, connect with us online. And every, other, other than that, everybody, have a great night, and we're looking forward to a great weekend. Friday is going to be a good day. Tomorrow we're going to say, thank God it's Friday. So God bless you guys. We'll talk to you again real soon.